EBC Sports. everyone and welcome to this college football Saturday on ABC. Coming right up will be Michigan State at Illinois and Washington against Stanford in regional action. In college basketball news, the Chicago Sun-Times has reported that the NCAA has found Illinois innocent of major recruiting violations. But this morning, we spoke to D. Allen Williams, chairman of the NCAA Infractions Committee. He said the committee is in deliberations now and no date has been set for release of a final report. Illinois had been charged with offering money and cars to several high school players. Violations that, if found true, could lead to the death penalty for that program. Back to football right now, and top-ranked Virginia is playing at Wake Forest. They're doing pretty good right now as they've moved into the fourth quarter, but earlier, Wake Forest was giving them a real scare. Second quarter action, Wake is on top. 2.27 to go to halftime. Sean Moore, though, finds Herman Moore. 49 yards from the touchdown. That moved them out in front, 18-14. They made the two-point conversion. Ten times this year, those two have hooked up for touchdown passes. And coming up in the Prudential Halftime Report, Beth Ruyek has the story on the Cavs' rise to the top of the pole. We'll be back with scores and highlights throughout the day. Now enjoy college football here on ABC. they started playing football a hundred years ago at the University of Illinois maybe those beginners dreamed of what you see now the great old stadium opened in 1923 where red grains became a legend crowds of more than 70,000 have come for game after game in the crisp feel of autumn among the unbelievable colors of mother nature's palette with two quality teams to play the game today the michigan state spartans and the fighting illini of illinois and here the fighting illini make their entry into memorial stadium four and one on the season two and oh in the big ten coach of the year successively and if he wins the conference season again uh, this year then he'll probably ruin it three years in a row and uh, that ain't bad <laughs> hello again everybody i'm keith jackson along with bob greasy bob illinois brings into this ball game against michigan state stunt 4-3 defense the best passing game in the big 10 what will it do to it well, the stunt 4-3 is not designed for the pass. It's designed to stop the run. The Spartans don't match up very well against this pass-oriented team. Illinois this year, four, eight, eight offensive starters returned from last year. Four offensive linemen, the top four running backs, the top two tight ends, but they lost their quarterback, Jeff George. A 5'9 sophomore quarterback has taken his place, Jason Verdusco. What happens? They don't, keep, they don't go to the run. They keep throwing in the back. Jason Verdusco is the leading passer in the Big Ten. So it may cause Michigan State some grief. The Spartans now milling about and about to make their entry into the stadium before another sellout crowd. Here they come, 2-2-1 two, two and 1-1 one, and one and one in the Big Ten. That conference loss was to Iowa. The win was that huge affair last Saturday over in Ann Arbor against Michigan. Coach George Perlis is in his eighth season with the Spartans, 48, 35, and 4. A win here today, and the Spartans might very well start thinking about a wardrobe for Pasadena. But, Bob, can they possibly play at the same emotional level today they did last week? It's going to be tough. That was a big rivalry last week uh, on the road in Michigan. They seem to play better on the road. Uh, than they do at home. Perlis is not an X's and O's guy. He's a motivator. He wants them physical. He says toughness wins games. X and X's and O's don't. This is their time of year. The last three years, they have won the last five games of the season. So this is their time of year. The series record between these two teams, not particularly pronounced because the series only started back in 1955. But 
I should tell you the home team has not won in this series since 1984. Looking at the Big Ten standings, you can readily see why this is a big ball game. Illinois unbeaten along with Iowa, though Iowa's in trouble over at Ann Arbor today. Minnesota's playing Indiana. So you can see Michigan State, if they win today, will have beaten probably the two toughest challenges in the Big Ten, Michigan and Illinois, on the road. This is homecoming weekend here at the Champaign-Urbana uh, campus. And uh, it's a particularly festive time in this part of the country. Players from the decade of the 60s have come back as the honored guests. By Northwest Airlines. And by GMAC. Helping America put GM quality on the road. I'm Jack Arun in the student section at Memorial Stadium. And keep as you said. This is homecoming. This is the 80th homecoming, and homecoming originated here on the University of Illinois campus back in 1910. These students are celebrating a fall Saturday afternoon just like their parents, their grandparents, and their great-grandparents did. But this game in particular will dictate more than what they do this afternoon. It could very well dictate where they go on New Year's Day. Let's go back up to you. You better get out of there. If you start <laughs> shouting like that, you won't talk for a week. Well, Michigan State go to have the ball first and their strength is their tailbacks Hickson and Duckett last week 222 yards rushing against uh, Michigan and for Illinois the strength is their front seven they're the best in the Big Ten Brownlow has an ankle injury may not uh, see a lot of action Brian Winters is the man in the middle and deep for Michigan State he probably won't get to return this because Corey Wells in the warm-up with the wind at his back was knocking it beyond the field of play. He hits a low liner out of bounds. So that'll back him up five, and now winners might have a The wind is blowing right to left, and it's strong. Up to 25 miles an hour. It will be a factor. May not be blowing on the field uh, in that particular location. You know, that's the top of the goalpost. But you get a ball up in the air, I'll guarantee you, it's going to help it. Well, before the ball game, watching the field goal kickers practicing kicking to our right, uh, it was affecting the football in uh, quite a bit. Back him up to the 30 now. And Corey Wells, 6'4", 205, freshman from Belleville, Illinois, will hit it again. Ryan Winters is a freshman from Toledo, Ohio, a wide receiver, very fast, number 82 back there for Michigan State in the white. Backing up, backing up, nope, no return of this one, he's beyond the end zone. So that's how much the wind is affecting it. So Michigan State will begin things up at the 20-yard uh, line. There is a penalty flag amidst the crowd down there. Dan Enos will start at quarterback. You can see the fifth-year seniors on the way toward wrapping up a brilliant career at quarterback for the Spartans. The rest of the backfield, we get a personal foul call. Gil Marchman is the referee. Don Thayer, the umpire. Jim Mullendore, the headlinesman. Jim Keogh, the line judge. Bob Colburn, the field judge. Dig Hornig, the side judge. And the back judge is Jimmy Sherlock. So that personal foul call goes against Illinois and moves the ball up to the 35. Personal foul on the kicking team, first and ten. The rest of the backfield for Michigan State, Pico Duckett will be the deep man. Rob Roy will be the fullback. Bradley and Spolitsky are the white people. Throwing into the wind, you're not going to see the ball thrown much over 25 yards, I don't think anybody can get any accuracy out of it. We've had a couple of penalties already, and no time off the clock is yet. And here's the first play of the ball game, and Duckett tries to bounce outside with it and can't get away from Mel Agee, who is in that outside line, rush linebacker position now, number 96, and he brought him down. So the series starts at the 35, and that pickup is for two. The big people up front, and uh, Eric Moten is playing on a very sore ankle, and the tenderness of it uh, may dictate some relief for him this afternoon. Pearson, number 68, is going to be involved in an interesting matchup today. Hyland Hickson is in the backfield right now. 
He was the big star in the game over at Michigan last week, and he starts off running hard again. He picks up three yards on that carry through heavy traffic, and Quentin Parker finally locked him down. The defense has Sean Streeter, Mo Gardner, and uh, Mike Poleski as the down people for uh, Illinois. L.A. Jeep, Aaron Shelby starting today instead of uh, Brownlow. Derek Brownlow with a very sore ankle. And the secondary, Henry Jones is uh, oftentimes the star in that defensive secondary for Illinois. He knows how to roll. Passes away. Pass is good. Pass is caught. Down near the Illinois 38-yard line by James Bradley. Take a look at it from behind the defense. Danny Enos continues to play well, especially on third downs. Last week against Michigan, about six or seven big third down conversions. This time outside the pocket, and Bradley makes a good uh, reception. Enos really playing well of late. Bill Hinkle came over to book him, number 51, just remind him that he was in the neighborhood. Bouncing around. Island Hickson, 220 pounder. And I think the game that Hickson had, Bob, last week over at Ann Arbor has to give him a big dose of confidence. Well, there's no question. Hickson is a senior. Duckett, who plays in front of him, although I think they are both co-starters. Duckett is just a sophomore. Here's a look combined at what they did last week. They were the key, and they are continuing to be the key for Perlis of Michigan State Ball Club. Duckett is back in at the tailback position, seven yards back, so he's got some time to read after he gets the ball, and he reads well this time, finds the hole for the first down to the 26-yard line of Illinois. So the Illini don't help themselves any by um, uh, coming up with that foul on the opening kickoff after they kicked it out of bounds, and... Uh, now they're getting shoved down the field. Well, a key matchup, Keith, in the trenches. The center for Michigan State, Jeff Pearson, will get some help blocking Mo Gardner. Gardner, the outstanding All-American, the best nose tackle in college football. Say what, Lou Tepper, the defensive coordinator for Illinois, has seen enough. Sore ankle and all. Derek Brownlow's in the ballgame, number 48 at linebacker. Hickson into the line. And you know who's there? Brownlow. That's why he's in the ball game. Brownlow did not practice all week because of an ankle injury, and it's uh, Tepper's policy, the defensive coordinator, that if a guy doesn't practice on Tuesday or Wednesday, that he doesn't start the ball game. It just remains to be seen how far Brownlow can go in this ball game. Tony Rollins is in the ball game now. a pretty good lick. He may not get up. Derek Brownlow nailed him with Quentin Parker. And Enos really took a lick into the rib cage from Brownlow. To look at Brownlow on the bad ankle at all. Sometimes emotions can get you back on the field. Yeah, he got him right in the back. Could be the air knocked out of him, the wind. I'm up. The ball is resting at the 18-yard line on the Illinois side of the field, and Dan Enos is up walking around now, talking to the coaches, and is surely going to be back into the ball game right after Jim Miller takes this snap. When you're injured, time out for you. You've got to leave the ball game for one play. Jim Miller, the freshman from uh, Waterford, Michigan, hands it off. The tailback carries Highland Hickson trying for the first down and did not make it. Now, we should probably see Enos come back into the game here. They well, might keep him out for this series. Critical play to miss, Keith, because it was third and three or four yards. Yep. Here he comes. Wearing the flak jacket, that uh, strip that goes around. Jack showed you that, I think, in one of the Southern California games where uh, they use it to protect the ribs. I think this is where the wind comes into effect very early here. They probably may have tried a field goal were it not for the wind. Fourth down and a yard and a half, and Enos coming down the line gives it to Hickson. Hickson is caught behind the line of scrimmage. 
fights his way close to the first down. But I don't think he got it. The spot does not look friendly. Derek Brownlow, number 48, was the ringleader of the tacklers. An option. Michigan State doesn't run many of these. You can tell how, how badly they wanted the first down if Eno's just coming back from injury. And the swarming defense of the Illini turns the ball over. Brownlow was right there. A.G. had a hold of the quarterback. Brownlow came in and turned the Hickson back inside. And the Illini defense have held. There is a score that will set up a considerable hum through Big Ten country, won't it? Iowa having gone ahead of Michigan. Look at the strengths for Illinois. It's their ball control passing attack. Makovic controls it by calling the plays. A weakness for Michigan State is the, their strong run front. The stunt for three, not very good against the pass. They may go to a three-man line a little bit later on if it's not successful with the four. They open with Howard Griffith, the deep man. Commando Bell with him. Jason Produsco is your quarterback. From the 17, Produce goes past, trips to the sidelines, caught by Bell from the fullback position. And he's out of bounds, just short of the first down at the 26. Jason Produsco is 5'9", 190. He is a sophomore from Antioch, California. He may be the best looking of the quarterback crop this year. Howard Christmas, of course, jumped into the headlines with his eight touchdowns in a single game. Wagner Lester shares time in that backfield as well. Elbert Turner is your burner, and Sean Wax is your possession receiver. And Griffiths now is the lone back. He's a very good receiver himself. The Illinois offense is built around the pass. Produsco goes to the other sideline. It is caught by Stephen Mueller, a sophomore from Valparaiso, Indiana, and it's a first down for the Fighting Illini. A 5-9 sophomore, huh? Well, he gets it done, folks. The size of the Illini front, led by their All-American center, Lovelace, he's very good. So is Tim, uh, Simpson at 284, the right guard. And the big man, of course, is Hopkins. But look at the size of the tight ends these days. <laughs> 260, 269. Those tight ends go in the offensive uh, line meetings. They don't go with the receivers. First down from the 39. Lester is the tailback. He's got the ball. Carried a little bit loosely across the 40 and up near the 42, where he was taken down by Cliff Conver and the middle linebacker for Michigan State, the man where the defense funnels everything toward him, Chuck Bullock, number 41. Confer Wilson, Reese, and Johnson, with Wilson and Johnson, the big people in that defense in front. Jenkins, Bolo, and Dixon Edwards, and uh, they're all good in that position. The secondary is a little bit dinged up, but they're healthy enough to be out there and battling. And Eddie Brown, of course, jumped into the national spotlight last week with the play over at the University of Michigan. This is Steve Fagan carrying the ball and gets the first down for the Illini on the Michigan State side of the field, 48-yard line. Illinois came into the ball game, the second uh, rated offense in the Big Ten. They were first ranked in the pass, in the pass, and sixth with the run. They used the pass to set up the running game. Commando Bell is the long back now. That's that pass as Caduceo lets it fly, and it's a little bit high. Pass intended for Albert Turner. Number eight, Turner is a 165-pounder, junior from Gary, Indiana, track man. I expect uh, there isn't a soul in the county that could run with him. Well, he's a Big Ten hurdles champion uh, this past year and uh, really brings some speed to that position for the Illini. This is a ball-controlled passing attack, but he can get it deep. Second down and 10, <laughs> Illinois at the Michigan State 48. Sets up, looks down the middle, goes underneath instead to Frank Hartley, his tight end. 
penalty flag is thrown, and you've got a roughing the quarterback, roughing the passer call, thrown by the referee back at the 45-yard line of Illinois. So the Spartans hurt themselves. Meantime, Hartley is down. He had a concussion last week in the Purdue ball game, and he was holding a leg, it seemed, uh, when he started to get up. I, I'll not try to guess as to what the problem is. But here's the penalty right here. Well, Verdusco has plenty of time here. The ball is gone. Oh, I mean, no. that's silly. That is really silly. Bill Johnson, number 96, the silliest foul you're ever going to see in a football oh, game. Oh, that is, that is, that is worse than silly. That's just dumb. I mean, right in front of the referee. Johnson is a junior. It's not like he's a freshman. You see, Hartley being carried off the field. It is an ankle, looks like. So Hartley's had a tough couple of weeks. Concussion last week, and now he's hurt his leg this week. Miami jumps to the lead over Notre Dame at South Bend today. The ball is down at the 28-yard line. First down, Illinois, after that silly, silly, silly penalty by Bill Johnson. You're not going to intimidate that kid, Produsco. I mean, he's, a, he's an All-American high school wrestler. You've got to be lucky to get your teeth back if you don't quit messing with him. Pass is complete to David Olson, a redshirt freshman tight end, and we've got another penalty flag thrown. Well, it looks like the boys in the striped shirts have been in the conference room, doesn't it? Well, and every call they've made so far that, that we've seen has been legit. You see the, the, the tenacity with which the uh, Spartans have come out. They want to be physical. They're knocking everybody around, and that may be why Johnson was trying to rough up Verdusco. That's not right in front of the referee. No, that's true, but, but that's the thought on his mind. Let's be tough and physical. Let's get after him, but that was just uncalled for. That's the perilous way not to be cheap shotting, but to be very tough and very physical. Illinois backing up here, though. The foul goes against the Illini. Iowa beat Michigan. At home, homecoming. That's a big shocker there. Now, Makovic. John Makovic and George Perlis really. Oh, if Makovic can win this game, yeah. Perlis would have two losses, and as would yep. Michigan. Yep. All right, it's Lester and Bell behind Verduzco on first down and 25. And the Michigan State defense, Johnson leading them. Take Wagner Lester down. And the clock shows eight minutes and ten seconds to go in the first quarter. No score. Ball is right on the 40. They've got to go close to the seven, uh, to the uh, 17 to get the first half. They need about 23 yards. But Hayden Fry and those Hawkeyes. The score was just announced to this crowd and a big reaction. They have stirred things up. Notre Dame's not the only team to beat Michigan this year, is it? Oh. The state of. <laughs> <laughs> the Illini blow another five yards on too much time. <laughs> kind of a wobbling start here in this ball game. Now back at the 45. I need about 28 and a half yards. This is Darren Boyer inside the 40 Darren to the 38. The ball carrier. It's going to be third down and very long. With the win, however, Elbert Turner, the burner, becomes a factor. Here's a look at Chuck Bullock in the center of that. Defense for seven. Michigan State. That time they went to a three-man line. We mentioned a little bit earlier. They may take a lineman out, put in a, a fifth defensive back, claim an outside linebacker. 
to stop some of the short passes. Bullock would be in there no matter what the situation. All right, Produsco drops. He lets it go, and it is incomplete intended for Sean Wax. Turner was going right down the middle of the field on just a straightaway post, and uh, Wax turned it inside, and we've got an Illinois man shaking up. It is Jason Produsco, the quarterback. is a deep square and usually takes a little longer to throw defensive man just rolls into him that's Johnson again number 96 so time out here for Jason Produsco at Illinois as Jason Produsco has made his way off the field now and has gone to the bench he was assisted by two people and he was obviously shaken after Bill Johnson had rolled into him. We're going to get a field goal try by Doug Higgins of 55 yards. The wind's got the ball, and it's good. He didn't get it up very high, but he nailed it, and it just tripped over for a career 55-yarder. a walk on he's now a, this is a fourth year he's a senior he's on scholarship now but he came here as a walk on the big kick lifts the uh the line eye jason produced Bill's injury we still don't know the extent of it except he had to be helped off the field he didn't look uh, he was walking with some help coming off defensive linemen are taught this and he just rolled in looked like he may have hyperextended the left knee as he was rolled into, all of the weight was on the front leg. Doesn't seem really necessary to do that, though. Let's check in with Jack. Well, we checked on Jason Verdusco with the doctor here for the Illini, and they said that he has a sprained knee. He is questionable as to whether he will return. One player that's out is the tight end, Hartley. He's out for the rest of the day and possibly for a couple of weeks. He has a sprained right knee. Kickoff is beyond the field of play and they'll bring it back to the 20 yard line where it'll be first and 10 for Michigan State. So there's Vadusco and looks like he, I thought for a moment he might even be headed for the locker room. Excuse me, excuse me, gotta go back there. So it's the left knee that they are concerned with and that's the knee that uh, Johnson rolled into and Bill Johnson weighs 290 pounds. Johnson comes off looking like the bad guy here, and I think he probably should, because you ran over and butted him in the helmet uh, right in front of the referee and got a 15-yard penalty or a few minutes ago, and now he rolls over the top of the quarterback and sprains his knee. Well, the first foul was definitely uncalled for and really dumb. The second one is not really a uh, practice that is, that is uh, taught around the NFL or college, but uh, it's effective. Here's a little swing pass out to Hyland Hickson, and Hickson crosses the 25 and pumps his way up to about the 27-yard line. So it'll be second down and three at that point. Hickson at 220 and uh, Duckett at 185. Pretty much the messengers so far today at the tailback position. A lot of talking going down there on the field, as you might imagine. This game now takes on added importance with Michigan getting beat by Iowa. Second down and three. That's the first down as Hickson carries. Senior from Fort Lauderdale is up across the 31 for the first down. Time remaining in the first quarter, six and a half minutes. <laughs> No, we have not called Mo Gardner's name yet in the ball game because Jeff Pearson, the center, and perhaps with some help on some of the plays, is handling it now, so far. He goes up the tailback. Enos rolls it out. Almost intercepted. Almost picked. 
picked off by Romero Price, the senior from New Orleans, number 58. In the process of the rollout, Mel Agee got over there. It looked like it was Agee got in front of Enos. They do a pretty good job of containing him. Somebody was in his face at least. Bryce usually has pretty good hands, has intercepted three passes coming into the ball game today. He's an outside linebacker, only weighs 212, so almost like a defensive back. Second down and 10. Duckett finds a crack. And Pico Duckett reaches the 43-yard line before Marlon Primus gets a hold of it. First down for Michigan State. Illinois leading three to nothing. Jason Produsco, quarterback, limping on a very sore left knee. Well, he is a tough, tough competitor. Very confident in his abilities. A very smart student of the game. As we mentioned, he was an All-American high school wrestler in the state of California. And he is a competitor and does not want to come out of the ball game. Dixon is in his tailback. Has the ball. Reed finds the hole over the left side and moves it to the 48-yard line. That's a pickup of close to five yards. <laughs> Meantime, Verdusco continues walking up and down the sideline, trying to shake off the effects of the injury. We'd like to welcome to the ABC family of affiliates Channel 53 from Lansing, Michigan, WJAJ TV. Welcome indeed. This is Dixon carrying the ball two yards to the 50, and that'll do it. It'll be third down and three, and here's Mo Gardner, number 95, involved in the play. Gardner is a very busy 260-pound nose tackle. He spins. He moves on every play. He's very hard to block. But uh, Jeff Pearson showed us, I think, in the ball game against Notre Dame when he handled Chris Dory. But he's a very capable at that center position. Ducket the tailback. He knows has it. Throws it. That'll be good for the first down. Tony Rollin, the sophomore from Akron, hauls it in, number 22. And Rollin made a couple of key catches last week for the Spartans of the Michigan game. He did that, and Rollin is a backup fullback. Now, Michigan State offensively, the strength is in their tailback, as we've already mentioned. They, they are not strong at the uh, wide receiver position. Courtney Hawkins, their outstanding player, Big Ten player from last year, is out with an injury. First down from the 45. Hickson is hit behind the line of scrimmage. And that's Mo Gardner. So he's quiet, he's quiet, he's quiet, and bang, bang, two plays. And that's a big one right there. Four to play in the first quarter. Well, this is the first time that they didn't double team him. The center tried to block him by himself by reaching. They pitched to the same side that they tried to block Gardner. That just doesn't work. He's just too quick. Gain is one, second down and nine. Rollin in the backfield with Duckett. Enos back to throw. Time to the sideline. Pass is caught right on the chalk. And short of the first down by Rollin. Rollin was all alone, but as he caught the ball and turned, he went out of bounds. If they're going to throw the ball, Keith, they throw it to their tailback or roll on the backup fullback. Their tight end, Young, weighs 260 pounds, is not a good receiver. Their starting fullback weighs 255. That's Rob Roy. And one of their wide receivers, I mentioned Hawkins, is out. So they, they really don't have many people to throw it to. Their backs are Bradley, the wide receiver. That's Duckett for the first down. So I think what's going on here for Michigan State is that Duckett and Hickson are feeding off each other. I mean, they're, they're alternating, and one goes and gets six, the other one tries to go get seven. This is, the, this is the same thing they did last week against Michigan, and this is their strength. This is the way they have to win the ball game. That's produced, though, trying to shake off the knee injury. Well, the, 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 the plus about that knee injury is it's his left that's been banged up. He doesn't plant or push off of the back knee. This is Hickson. 
He's a tough guy. They finally put him down at the 23 yard line. He is a tough guy. You mentioned he's only 5'10. Actually, 5'9, 210 pounds, so he's stockier than Duckett. Duckett to this point has gained 30 yards and Hickson 29. Hickson is a little taller and a little uh, leaner and is the speed merchant of the two. Rob Roy checks back into the backfield now for Michigan State. They've got a grinder going. Second down, four. This is Duckett. See that quickness? He bounces outside, gets the first down. Henry Jones forced him out of bounds. Duckett has the speed to get outside. He has, he's a slasher, a little bit faster than Duckett. Duckett is more of a power back. He'll run inside most of the time. Got to mix up. Hickson, <laughs> yeah, it's a thought. You know, I've all, all my life I've been told the great running backs, the more they have the ball, the better they do. But here, here's a philosophy that doesn't agree. Yeah, but, but they're them. giving them to the, the one or the other every time. They're not throwing much. This is Hickson. And Hickson gets inside the 10. So that first down possession started at the 13, and he's put it down at the 8. You can see Hickson kind of shorter, a little, uh, a little stockier. He is the power runner. He'll be running inside most of the time, whereas before, 35 was uh, Duncan. He'll be running the wide plays a lot. This is the 14th play in this possession. Typical George Furness possession. He loves this kind of football. This is Hickson. And he reaches the five. On the carry for Michigan State, number 30, Highland Hickson. He really didn't get a friendly spot on it. They mark him uh, about a half a yard short of the five. One twenty-five to go in the first quarter. Third and two. That particular mark by the Illini defense may be about due for a puncture. Close to his first down. Again, he does not get a friendly mark on that, from that official on the far side of the field. It looked like he was near the three, but they put him Making down at the, the four. For the Illini, Mel Agee, 96. Now they got a decision to make. Uh, looks like they're going to kick the field goal. I don't know. Yep. Yeah. Fourth and one, ball at the Illini four. Higgins had a 55-yard career-long field goal to give Illinois the 3 nothing lead. Now with 48 seconds to go, John Langlow is going to try one. Knocks it up and through. 21 yards by John Langlow, and we are tied inside the last minute of the first quarter. Clock stopping at 39 seconds. So as they move the ball from the, down to the first down at the 13, but from the 13 in, uh, the real estate got pretty crowded. Well, it was a big drive for Michigan State. They came back similar to what they did last week against Michigan so often. Right after Michigan scored, and this week right after Illinois scored, they got all the way down the field and put some points on the board. Monday on ABC Sports, the NFL rivalry between Cincinnati and Cleveland. The Bengals are going into Cleveland, trying to hold their lead in the AFC Central. They have completed that tough Western road trip, and they got out of it uh, one and two, which, uh, all things considered, wasn't all that bad for them. Well, they had, what, five games on the road because of the fact that the Cincinnati Reds needed to play in the home ballpark. So they had to go out to uh, Houston and play out of Houston, and Houston got even. Seattle, Los Angeles, and Houston. Well, last year. <laughs> yeah, they certainly did, didn't they? I happen to agree with Sam. Yay, Sam. Steve Fagan, Clinton Lynch are the return people for the Illini with 39 seconds. This kickoff by Langlow is going to be into the wind. He might be better off if he's it. 
He keeps it down low. Keep it out of the wind. Illinois special teams have not been very good. Their returns, kickoff returns, are last in the league. Yeah, he keeps it on the ground, but it's picked up by the short man. Look out. You better get him. I mean, John Wright who is a wide receiver, was stationed upfield, and he caught that thing quick. And uh, the Illini uh, will start their possession just short of their own 40-yard line. That was a good move by Makovic uh, to put a uh, wide receiver right as a backup receiver, knowing that it was probably going to be a swift kick into the str strong wind. It's a good hands people out there on the receiving team. Well, Jeff Kenny, the sophomore from Wheaton, Illinois, is a quarterback. This is Howard Griffith, turned upside down by number 19, Freddie Wilson. Jeff Kinney is the son of Jeff Kinney, who played at Nebraska and for the Kansas City Chiefs. 6'4", 190, and he comes from Red Grange's hometown, Wheaton, Illinois. Kenny played a lot against Southern Illinois University in the second or third game of the year and scored on eight of nine possessions. Something like that. It was really, he really played very well. Produsko injured out of the game right now, and Kenny is in at quarterback as the first quarter comes to a close. And the Reven at three. Before we go farther, let me correct the call letters of our new affiliate in uh, Lansing. L-A-J, W-L-A-J TV, Channel 53 in Lansing. We were given the wrong information. We apologize for it. Second quarter of play. The Fighting Illini and the Spartans of Michigan State in a 3-3 tie. And Kenny throws the ball off the hand of Howard Griffith, and Kenny takes a wallop as he delivers the ball. So it looks like the, the front people, of, that was uh, Wilson that did that. Bobby Wilson leveled him, and Bill Johnson's already made his mark. And the defensive line is really getting after it for Michigan State. Third down. Close to a first down, too, Keith. Very, very close. Well, in the first quarter, a couple of key plays. A late personal foul right there by Johnson moves the ball closer to field goal range. And then here's the other one. Johnson again involved, rolling into the quarterback. And Verduzco was lost at least for the rest of that series, and he has not yet to return. First down. first down. So Kenny took a chance, threw a high hard one, think he caught it, and it's good by half a football. Darren Boyer checks into the backfield now for Illinois along with Howard Griffith. 3-3 three, three tie at 14 and a half minutes to go in the first half. Homecoming weekend at the University of Illinois. Call it midfield. Boyer. He's not fancy, but he's a tough guy. He'll, he'll, he'll put some, uh, some helmet on you. In the first quarter, Michigan State had two possessions to Illinois' one. They had more total plays. The total yardage is in their favor, 124 to 45 in time of possession. Just what Michigan State and George Perlis wants to do. Control the ball on the ground with their running backs. Reduzco still walking around, trying to shake off the knee injury. Meantime, Jeff Kenny is the quarterback. Second down and seven. Right, right. 
Griffith, just over the 45 of Michigan State. So at least four, four and a half yards to go now on third down to keep the ball. And you start talking about thinking about field goal going in that direction, you've got to be at least inside that 20 yard line. That's for sure. Third and four. Ball at the Michigan State 44. Third down and a long four. And the Illini will keep it. But they waste third down. It brings up fourth down, and the punting team will have to come in. Well, this is a problem when your number one quarterback is not in the ball game. And you have the backup go in. The backup doesn't get as many reps during the week as the starting quarterback. That time, Kenny, number seven, the quarterback just wasn't ready for it. He probably forgot the snap count. The ball came up, and he wasn't ready for it. Corey Wells will do the punting, and Brian Winters is deep to receive it for Michigan State. Low snap, pressure coming, gets it out of there. Not a particularly good kick, obviously, with, without spin. It isn't going to go very far in the wind. 16 yards, and Michigan State will possess it at their own 30. Verduzco has been warming up, testing his mobility, and uh, knowing him, I expect he's going to go back to the coach and say, I can go. But the doctor will have the final say. Pico Duckett is the tailback now. Or if you like, the single back for Michigan State. Penalty flag flies from the linesman as Duckett turns up the heel across the 30th to the 32. In the first quarter of play, Michigan State possessed the ball 10 minutes and 25 seconds to... Uh, in fact, up to this particular point, accepting that last play, it's 10:25 to 7:15. Big edge, Spartan. They pick up. They pick up the flag. No, no foul. It's all right. I like that. I mean, if you uh, drop the drop the flag or if you throw it and then you see no, it wasn't a foul. Pick it up. That's it's all right. The uh, the officials have been getting a lot of attention this year around the country. Deservedly so. Unfortunately, yes. Bucket to tailback. Enos rolls it out. Then he gets it off. Intercepted by Henry Jones. And Jones is down at the Michigan State 30. the back the tip by Bradley number three he led the Big Ten in interceptions last year with five that's his second one this year the ball rests right on the 30-yard line first down for Illinois a 3-3 tie and 11 35 to go in the first half Lester and Griffith in the backfield behind Jeff Kinney Lester reverse Turner, the speedster, the track man, knocked down behind the line of scrimmage by number 51, Carlos Jenkins. What a big play by Jenkins. Verduzco is back to the lineup. Doherty and all, he returns at quarterback, but it was Carlos Jenkins, the fifth-year senior from Boynton Beach, Florida, who made that big defensive play for the Spartans, a loss of eight yards. And this is going to probably reduce his mobility just a tad. Produsco. Second down, a little skip step, turn, throw, sets up a screen, screen for Howard Griffith to the outside, he goes, and turns a big play on his return to the game. So it was Verduzco who had the grit and gizzard and the patience to take the hit if it came. And that's a big play. Here's Jack. Keep 
what they've done to Jason Verdersko's knee is they've taken one of these normal knee braces and they've attached it with elastic bandages to the outside of the left knee. It still gives him plenty of mobility this way, but limits it back and forth where he was injured. So he may be a little bit questionable, a little bit gimpy. He's back out there right now. That's the brace that most offensive linemen will wear. It's very light. Doesn't obstruct you from doing not, uh, much of anything. It's third down and three. Bad pass. It was might have been tipped at the line of scrimmage. I mean, it was. He had his man. He just didn't get the ball to it. Yeah, the John timing White. wasn't there. The, the blitz was on. And sometimes when you're out with an injury and you don't feel the same as you did maybe when the game started, it's going to take you a little bit of time to adjust to that brace, adjust to the soreness of that area. Maybe he won't adjust it for the whole ball game, but at least he's out there trying it. They're going to try a 40-yard field goal into a 25-mile-an-hour win. Doug Higgins gets it up. So if normally a 40-yarder, he'd knock that thing uh, way up and over, but not with a 25-mile-an-hour win, and we stay tied. The team with the ball in the fourth quarter and the wind at its back is going to have an edge. Well, Illinois has the win, the first had the win the first quarter, and we'll have it again in the fourth quarter. Uh, Michigan State will have it in the second and third quarter. So. Right now, the defenses are holding the game together for both teams in a 3-3 time. On first down from the 23-yard line, this is Pico Duckett for Michigan State. And he's up to the 26-yard line. Look at Henry Jones, who intercepted Enos' passes. The pass to stop that last drive. He... Uh, was an All-Big Ten player last year, and the L.I. and I lead the Big Ten in pass defense this year, and we're second overall last year against the pass in the uh, NCAA. So their pass defense has been very, very good. This is Duckett weaving through the traffic and picking up the Michigan State first down at the 36-yard line. A 55-yard field goal by Doug Higgins gave the Illini the opening lead. Michigan State came back, Langlow, a 21-yard field goal, and that's where we are, 3-3. Iowa has defeated Michigan over at Ann Arbor, 24-23. This time, there isn't any room Ducket and the Illini handle him. Eric Foggy, number 76, Foggy, 290 pounds. If he ever grows up, he's about to be a big fella. <laughs> Minnesota gets out to a 6 0 lead in the third quarter. Oh, it's now 12 0 Minnesota over Indiana. That's a significant ball game, too. Hickson is in the backfield now on second down and eight. He's got it to the outside. Couldn't turn it around the corner, and the man who forced it was number 16, Marlon Primus, the free safety. Primus, as much as anybody, though, he didn't make the tackle. He made the play. There's a lot of conversation going down there, too. Hickson is trying to talk, and he's talking with Jones and Primus. Well, that's one thing sitting up here or watching at home you really don't know or see a lot of and then here that's the conversation going on a lot of intimidating trying to be done down there on the field Michigan State always known to be a physical team coming into Illinois and of course the Illini they don't want to be intimidated when they're at home third and four Eno throws it away He was getting some heat. And he held on to Poloski, had him all the way into the sideline. And then he didn't throw the ball until he reached the sideline. And Illinois defensively, uh, Tepper, the coordinator, doing a good job of containing 
Enos to Michigan State. They're trying to do the same thing this week they did last week against Michigan, and this week it's been a little bit tougher. Watch this punt. And if he hits it, Josh Butler weighs about 250 pounds. If he hits it, he's liable to knock it completely out of state. The wind at his back. Oh, he gets a bad snap. Well, he hit it anyway. 58 yards to the goal line. He hit it about another six. And he really didn't hit it solid. <laughs> Been a very festive weekend here at the University of Illinois. So from the 20 yard line, here comes Illinois. Fagan is the deep back. He's got the ball. Got a block from Bell, turns it inside, and not much. Iquinella, the first man to get to it. Three yard pickup. Take a look at Chuck Bulla last week, middle linebacker for the Spartans, and we ask him, yeah, he's bleeding. Wasn't bleeding last night. We talked to him. Oh, that's a wounded goose that works. John Wax goes up and makes the reception. I'll say that one more time. John Wax goes up and makes the reception <laughs> because that thing was fluttering around like a feather in the wind. Well, it was into the wind. You're right. Here's Wax. Here, he's going to run inside the corner and out here. He's got to throw it over the defensive back at the bottom of your screen. This is not an easy throw, especially into the wind. Barely gets it in there. Nice throw by Verduzco. Bell and Fagan lined up behind Jason Verduzco playing with a brace on his left knee. Having been injured in the first quarter, penalty flag is down. That pass is thrown high, but Mueller goes up and gets it. Let's see about the flag. It came out of referee's pocket. The back wasn't set. He was shifting out of the eye formation, and the back just was not set. Gil Marchman, your referee. Cost him five. Here's Makovic calling the plays. Uh, you know, this win we're talking about, he and Verduzco going into right now, doesn't matter that much to L Illinois because it's a short ball control, medium range type passing game that Makovic likes to employ. Doesn't throw the ball deep a lot, but uh, throws it short, throws it to a lot of different receivers. In fact, the last two ball games, 10 different receivers have caught passes for Verduzco in Illinois. The offensive philosophy of Illinois is, is really, really and truly the perfect antidote for the Michigan State defense. Big play by Howard Griffith. That's a tough run. First down, Illinois, Michigan State, 43-yard line. Howard's going to need the oxygen bottle after that one. Well, we talked about the key in this ball game was Bulla trying to make the plays at linebacker. This time he gets overrun, misses the tackle right there. One of the linemen pushed him past the hole, and Griffith just with some good, tough running. Straight up from he ran right over Alan Heller. Yes, he did. Here he goes again. From the 43 down to the 39, where Bobby Wilson makes the tackle for Michigan State. Howard Griffith, you know, it's uh, good to halftime. Uh, Here's what's coming up at halftime. A first for Virginia, the marching band, and the play of the week. Second down and six. Pinky, the tight end. Good for the first down. And again, short. Medium range passing attack is working. 
First down, Illinois, Michigan State, 31, 3-3 three, three, tie. I think he is 6'5". He came to Illinois on a basketball scholarship and then switched over to tight end. There goes Griffin. And he's pushed out of bounds by Chuck Bullock, that middle linebacker. linebacker right there I remember I came here in 1961 or two three 63 I guess it was and uh, we'll do we'll talk to Mike Tolliver Jim Grabowski and Dick Butkus and Ozark Airlines landed here in the DC-3 and it was cold and frozen in December I stepped off and my feet went straight up my head went straight <laughs> south and I wound up in the infirmary Wagner Lester <laughs> trying for the first down and he's very close but he was probably of his generation the man at that position. Right? Yes, he was. He, he was a uh, very tough linebacker, very intimidating for a quarterback to come to the line of scrimmage. I remember coming up my my rookie year with the Miami Dolphins. He was with the Bears, of course. Coming to the line of scrimmage several times. It actually caused me to uh, line up under the wrong guy at the line of scrimmage. <laughs> I was worried so much about where he was. I lined up behind my guard once or twice. It'll be third down at a short yard. You got a timeout goal by Illinois with five minutes and 13 seconds to go in the first half. And we're still tied at three. <laughs> Illinois looking at uh, third down and a short yard for the first down. Wanted to make sure they had all the pieces and all the knots tied because this is a very big first down for them. Well, it is, Keith, and this might be a time where you would go for a big play. Maybe if uh, Makovic and his coaches have seen something on the film uh, during the week, they can go for a big play here on third and one and then come back on fourth and one and then go for the first down. is claiming it was Illinois that moved. <laughs> Offside, Michigan State. George, <laughs> not a happy camper right now. Take a look and see if, yeah, there's no question. When you put, you put your hands under there, the quarterback can't pull out like that. It's an illegal shift. See why he's unhappy. Yeah. He's right. Now, when a quarterback goes to the line of scrimmage, when he can shift is if he doesn't put his hands under the center. Once you have your hands under center, you, you cannot stay do there. that. Yeah. You've got to stay there. Now, that's a bad call. But it's the first down on the field for Illinois. From the 16-yard line, Verduzco underneath dumps the ball off to Howard Griffith. And he swarmed on at the 14-yard line. That's a pickup of about three. Miami's going back to the lead over the Irish at 17-13 in the, the second quarter. Excuse me, Keith. The second pass today that Griffith has caught, he came into this ball game with 91 career receptions. Everybody remembers him for the eight touchdowns that he scored earlier this year against Southern Illinois in a one ball game. But excellent receiver. Verdusco hooks his pass out, caught by Turner. And he is tackled by Eddie Brown. So eight second down by eight here. And Eddie Brown makes another key play. That was a tough uh, play he got, he got for Verdusco to execute. He had to fake the toss and turn all the way around. You can see the toughness of this young kid right here. 5'9", just a sophomore. Tough competitor, does not want to come out. He got run over just about the time he threw it, too. Third down. And six. Incomplete. 
and then almost intercepted. So it stays incomplete, and it'll bring up fourth down, and that'll get Higgins into the ball game. There's going to have to be a point in time where Makovic decides whether or not to leave Verduzco in when, when you're injured or partially injured trying to play or put in a healthy quarterback and see if you can get the production that way. This will be a 28-yard field goal try. He hit one from 55 with the win, missed from 40 into the win, and this is 28 into the win, which makes it about 28, I mean, about 38 or 40. And he just slides it inside the upright good. And so Illinois will go to the lead 6-3 with 3 minutes and 39 seconds to play in the first half. Push-up underway by the Illini cheerleaders down in the end zone. And let's spend a moment at the Michigan State campus. shipping old tires to make safer football fields? Who's producing bigger and better salmon? Who's helping to brighten your world? Who's helping inner city kids cope with new challenges? Who's working to save our national symbol? Who's producing superior apples with fewer chemicals? The Agricultural Experiment Station at Michigan State University. Research for your future. at the two coaches, George Perlis arguing uh, that late let call, but uh, he's not an X's and O's guy, he's a tough guy, he says if you're tough, you win, you win. Makovic, on the other hand, former quarterback, likes to play golf, does like the X's and O's, very clever uh, guy of uh, Perlis, a blue collar guy, uh, sweat jacket, little pudgy, Makovic on the other hand is a formations guy, likes motion, jacket and tie, always neat, Perlis likes to play the smash mouth football and Makovic likes the finesse. Contrast in coaches. Quick kick didn't work that time either. They get possession up around the 35 yard line. Here's Jack Aruta. Keith, as you said, the decades of the 60s, the football players from that era here, well, some of the coaches are as well. Pete Elliott from 1960 to 1966 called the shots here for the Illini. And what a great game you had in the Rose Bowl in 1964. The greatest uh, moment I've ever had as a coach and fun for all these guys that are here. We've had a tremendous turnout of most of the players. Uh, best reunion I've ever been to like this. And, and it's uh, a real pleasure. How you much has the game changed? How much has it changed since you coached? less than most people want to make it the rules have changed to allow you to do things and players are bigger but it's not that much change Keith. good to see pete hall of fame up in camp just tremendous coach hey, ball is up outstanding job yeah, he does pete. Don't ever get on the golf course with that restaurant <laughs> that's Ooh, for sure well, i tell you you <laughs> won't go home with your shoes uh-huh ball is at the 42 yard line Duckett and Hickson today. Duckett has 63 yards. Hickson has 41 yards. It is now second down and three. There's the value of Duckett. He's got that kind of quickness. He got into the stack. They Bounced off of it and took off and got the first down. Ball being marked at the Illinois 47-yard line. Time remaining, 2 minutes and 45 seconds. That's the game you'll have next week here on ABC Sports. That will also be a big ball game, but Indiana was in trouble at Minnesota, and Michigan got beat today. Depending on how this one comes out here, uh, the winner of this ball game may be in the driver's seat with the Iowa Hawkeyes now becoming a very important personality in this whole thing. Island Hickson, number 30, carrying the ball and getting about five yards. You mentioned Iowa, Keith. They have, uh, you know, they beat, uh, they beat uh, Michigan uh, today. They've uh, 
beat Michigan State a couple weeks ago. Everybody thought that was such a big upset. Maybe it wasn't. <laughs> You're right. Pico hit behind the line of scrimmage or right on the line of scrimmage and taken down and a good jarring tackle. Number 95 did the work, Mr. Mo Gardner. Here's Gardner right here. You see, now watch the two guys as they double team him, straight blocking along the front. Double team, he turns, spins around, and gets a piece of it. That's his asset is his quickness. He doesn't weigh a lot for an old tackle, only 258. But he is very quick, spins out of double team. Now you got Duckett and Hickson both back there as Enos picks off up the middle and fumbles the football. And Illinois has it. Looked like it was Bryce that got it. So the Spartans turn it over. Take a look at Enos. Made a lot of plays last week in that big win at Michigan. Trying to do the same thing. Man-to-man -man coverage in the secondary. Everybody's covered. If he can get by those two defenders, there was a lot of room to run. Rice with another big play. As we mentioned, three interceptions coming in and also has two fumble recoveries on the year. Polosky was involved in there, too. I think he might have been the guy that knocked it loose. Produsco drills one, passes caught by Wagner Lester, and it picks up about eight yards on the play. They're fighting the clock now with less than a minute, 55 seconds. Illinois has two timeouts remaining. The clock will stop when they move the team. So he needs the first down here, and he has it. And that pass to the sideline completes to Sean Wax. They've held Wax pretty well under control. He made one really good catch down the sideline. That was a key one for a first down. So your clock stops now at 47 seconds. Wax, the last two weeks, has had 13 receptions for 285 yards. He has really been in the uh, in the groove, he and Verdusco both. And how impressive is Verdusco, Keith? Just keeps coming back out, limping, throwing the ball, sideline passes, very impressive. goes to Camino Bell, and Bell is rolled down at the 42-yard line. That's short of the first down. The clock will keep running unless they call a timeout. And they haven't. That's a penalty flag. The ball is thrown out of bounds. And uh, was taken down. But the man upfield in the defensive secondary, the official threw the flag. Side judge. Ineligible downfield. So while they sort this out, I'll just plant this idea in your mind. We've been talking about the uh, Big Ten Championship possibly being decided uh, November 10th over at Ann Arbor between Illinois and Michigan. No, it may be decided right here against, uh, as uh, Iowa comes into play, Illinois, November 3rd. That's an illegal participation, not uh, ineligible downfield, and the penalty goes against the Michigan State Spartans. That's most likely 12 players on the field against Perlis in Michigan State. The ball is now located at the 27-yard line of Michigan State and first down Illinois. The Illini still have two timeouts remaining and uh, Verdusco is taken down hard and the pass is very, very short. Bill Johnson hit him and uh, he is now really limping. Take a look. Michigan State has gone away from the stunt 4-3. Only three rushers. Let's run it, and then we'll stop it a little bit. Three-man line. Now, stop it right here. Everybody is man-to-man. -man. Look at the man coverage. This is a big change for uh, Michigan State. This is why there was nobody open downfield, and a change for Michigan State. Three-man line. 
is going to come it out. Pass is underneath. The pass is good. Short of a first down. Eight seconds, seven seconds. They've got two timeouts, and they stopped the clock at six seconds. Stephen Mueller coming underneath the coverage. Michigan State loves to keep everything in front of them. And uh, you can nibble and nibble and that's That's been away. the history of the stunt 4-3. Rush, uh, rush the line of scrimmage. Don't let them get any running, but don't give them anything deep. So there's been an intermediate area in there that you can get some passing. And that fit in exactly with what Illinois likes to do, intermediate passing. Well, at six seconds, they, instead of risk another pass play, they're going to send Doug Higgins in and uh, try the field goal. So that will mean we will have had, if he is successful, a total of four field goals, period, in the first half of play. He was good, 55 yards, wind at his back, short at 40 yards and in, into the wind, good at 28 yards into the wind, and this will be around 36 yards. something on the board the momentum going in at halftime they'll have time to kick it off and they'll undoubtedly strip it along the ground because they have to kick it into the wind certainly plays a factor in this ball game, but I think the fact that we've had four field goals is not completely uh, caused by the win. There's two pretty good defenses out on this football field, and uh, Illinois came in number two in the Big Ten, and Michigan State number four. And John McAvick said that yesterday. He said if our offense is either one, they're going to really get cranked up. The defense will wind up completely dominating the ball game. Is going to hurt the offense. Yep. Help defense. That's a good low line drive script kick all the way back to the eight yard line for Brian Winters. He's still bouncing around. Now he's going to run out of, he ran out of print. And all of a sudden the white shirts were gone and uh, everything around him was uh, orange and blue. And down he went. 9 3 halftime, Illinois. Well, thank you very much, Keith. An upset in the Big Ten at Michigan today. And Virginia, ranked number one of the nation, rolls over Wake Forest. Beth Reed. Yeah. And, uh, the medical folks would make a call on him, and he might not play the second half. We still don't know whether he's going to or not, but it certainly looks like he's going to answer the call. The deep people for Illinois to return the kickoff are Steve Fagan, 44, and Clinton Leach, 28. Langlow hits it. Illinois is leading 9-3. With the win, the ball's knocked off the playing surface and will come out to the 20-yard line first down. Well, the big question is, will number 10 take the field? And the answer is yes. And here's Jack Aroot. And Keith, that's one of the things that Coach John McAvick told me as he came out of the locker room. Although he's concerned about the injuries, he will start Jason Verdusco again. He was fairly happy with the first half. The same cannot be said with his counterpart, George Perlis. Perlis was livid at his Spartan, saying they were flat. They need to come off the ball harder. They need to play better smash mouth football. Let's go back up to you. Well, Verdusco's pass is incomplete, intended for Griffith sort of drifting out that time and re released it uh, sort of tenderly and Dixon Edwards spoiled it. Michigan State played such an emotional game last week at Ann Arbor in beating Michigan. It's very difficult to play two emotional games like that back to back. Well you're right Keith and uh, that's one of the strengths though of George Perlis uh, in getting this team ready to play. They, they like to play physical football and uh, 
They should be tough coming out the second half. Throw it underneath, set up a little screen action for Wagner Lester. And he'll get about five yards out of it, so it'll be third down and five. In the first half, Verdusco was 12 of 17, and Griffith had uh, 31 yards rushing. They had eight different receivers that caught passes the first half. Defensively, Michigan State was led by Bulla with six. Third down. Flip the back. Double wide. Good protection. Down the middle. Pass short. I think he was trying to get the ball to Howard Griffith, and Chuck Bullock just covered him up. And it brings up fourth down. And uh, Michigan State is bound to get good field position here unless Forey Wells has brought a howitzer with him because he's got to kick it into the wind. His first try today into the wind was a low snap, and he got only 16 yards. Icorn, let's see if Greg gets it back a little better. It's low again. It's blocked. Got a piece of it. Goes straight up in the air. And the Michigan State Spartan oh, has got the ball. They finally control it. Number 33, Brian Bulletich, finally caught it. It looked like that thing was a hot rock for about eight seconds. Nobody wanted it. And finally, Bulletich caught it. Well, this is the third punt this year. The third punt this year that they have blocked, that uh, Illinois has had blocked, excuse me, from the right side. No question about that. He almost got there too quick to block it. I still didn't get his number. Here he is from over here. Watch as he comes from our left side. This poor blocking up front. 20. Todd Murray. Murray's the one that blocked the punt against Notre Dame. Yeah, right. First down from the 24 of Illinois for Michigan State. With Duckett and Roy lined up behind Enos. The Spartans have made a break. Duckett sticks his head in the pile and Mo Gardner eats him up. Mo Gardner pounces on the running back for Michigan State. And it'll be second down and 10. It's Todd Murray right there with his helmet off, number 20. The man that blocked the punt against Notre Dame was a starting cornerback. Uh, he's the one that dropped that late pass against Notre Dame to allow Notre Dame to win. Hickson. Pass down inside the 20, caught by number 22, Tony Rollin. They've got to go to the 14 for their first down. Inside the 20 by a half a foot or so. So it is third down and uh, six. Third and six. Into the corner of the end zone, the wind blows the ball away. The pass intended for Smolinski. He never had a chance. And so Michigan State is unable to cash in with the touchdown, and touchdown is what they needed right there. Yeah, it was a big defensive series for Illinois. After having the punt block, they come back, hold uh, uh, Michigan State, and make them go for the field goal. That says win, Illinois. This skirmish, in a way. 37-yarder for Langlo. Oh, that's a bad snap. But they get it down and they miss it. And that says double win, Illinois. Certainly the Illini won that round. Score remains 9 3. So now Michigan State fritters away an opportunity. And the Illini take over first down at their 20, leading 9-3. to three. That was a key turning point in the ball game right there. The block punt and then Illinois not allowing any points. 
Produsco gives it to Howard Griffith. 35-yard line. The Spartans are hollering for the ball, but they won't get it because Howard was down. The Big Ten standings now look this way. Look at Iowa. Look at Minnesota. Look at Minnesota. And all the scores now, all the games have been completed except for this one. Illinois could go to 3-0 if they can hang on. And if Michigan State keeps playing like they've been playing, they're, Illinois will. Indiana, Michigan, that'll be seen next week here on ABC Sports. But uh, the Iowa Hawkeyes have uh, really become a major, major player. Minnesota and Iowa meet at Minnesota November 24. And that game, of course, is for the Floyd of Rosedale. John Goodekunst, the head coach up at uh, Minnesota, doing a good job. Well, let's go back and take a look at this and see if the ball comes out, which yeah, it, it did. did. Yep. But uh, the minute he went down, the uh, man was standing right there and he blew the whistle. There's no way the call was going to go any other way. Well, the ball was loose before he was yep. down. Though. Was. Produsco sidearms to Wax. Wax makes a good catch and is wrestled down by Alan Haller. And he will be short of a first down near the 44-yard line. Those are about 10 to 12-yard passes that Wax is catching into this strong win. Wax uh, had 100 yards the last two ball games, so he has been in the groove and playing very well the last couple of weeks. Produce go only 5-9. He has to look around those offensive linemen, not over. Griffith. Great feet. The man has, is one of the best in the business at this level of football using his feet. I mean, they had him stone cold dead, and he just danced his way for the first down. Griffith has 29 career touchdowns as you take a look at Makovic discussing things on the sideline. Griffith with 29 career touchdowns is only too shy of Red Grange's record of 31, which has stood for six and a half decades. Griffith and Bell are uh, in the backfield. Griffith is 29 and becoming more and more obvious as the day goes on in the Illinois offense. Produce goes past to the sidelines is incomplete. Thrown intended for Gus Palma, and he had no chance to get to it. John McAvick commenting about uh, Jason Verduzco's toughness born out of his wrestling uh, had this comment on the youngster. You know that he's going to be a competitor because wrestling is one of the most competitive sports, and it's one-on-one, -on -one and there's no one to count on, and he has a lot of that in him. Uh, he's an emotional guy because of that. Sometimes we have to really uh, help him just stay calm about what he's doing. Little swing pass thrown out here to Fagan. Fagan to midfield, hit down by 51 in white. That'll be Carlos Jenkins for the Spartans. Got to go to the 44 for the first down. They need six. It's interesting that Makovic was commenting on Verduzco being very emotional. And earlier this year, they actually benched him. Uh, he wasn't playing well against Southern Illinois in the third game of the year. He sat on the bench by himself and really pouted during the final three quarters. He apologized to the team and has played very well ever since then. Makovic said, you know, he was just a little bit immaturity, but he's such a competitor. He wants to be the guy. Tries to touch the ball into number 36, Lester, and he can't do it. But if he's healthy, if the knee is not hurt, he easily runs for the first down there. The thing about throwing into the wind, you have to have your feet set. You cannot be throwing the ball, just moving around, throwing it off balance, because the wind is going to catch it. You need to throw a good spiral with your feet planted. Winners is deep. Jimmy Harness is in to punt for Illinois. He is a freshman out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. First punt today. He almost got it blocked, but he got some foot on it and got it out of there, and it wobbled around like a knuckleball to about the 16-yard line. 
so into the win. Jimmy does all right. 35 yards, 10, 12 to go. Game, and Keith Jackson was talking about Jim Grabowski when he met him back in the 60s. Now you're calling the shots for the Illini <laughs> Football Network. You were also the Grand Marshal today. Feel kind of old, Jim? Uh, well, I figure that's the only thing that makes you what the honor is, that you've got to be old to be a Grand Marshal. But it certainly was a lot of fun. What about the memories of the 64 Rose Bowl when you scored that game-breaking touchdown? Well, Jack, I'll tell you, just a great thrill. What makes it even more special is all the guys are back here today, and we're just having so much fun, just a thrill. Well, he's going to go back to calling the play-by-play -play here, the color analyst, along with the play-by-play -play man, Dick Martin. Pete? Thank you. Danny Enos, turn, hand, duck it, and Tico to the 22. Duckett hasn't been able to really pop one yet. They ain't over. Well, the, the statistics in the first half were almost the same, but uh, Illinois had the three field goals and Michigan State only one. Michigan State emotionally has to be down right now, Keith, because they just blocked that punt deep in Illinois territory and didn't get anything out of it. This is Hickson. Out to the 24, need two more for the first down. There's Big Jim at work. Eric Moten is out of the lineup right now for the Michigan State offensive front. And Roosevelt Wagner is in there. He's a sophomore at 290 out of Ravenna, Ohio. So Eric Moten, that sore ankle, has to come out and take some rest. This is Highland Hickson. And he's taken down by Marlon Primus, the free safety. And you, you've heard Primus's name called two or three times today for taking on big people. Uh, I'll tell you what, Marlon ain't no gimme. He's 6'3", 220 pounds at free safety. Yes, he was an all-Big Ten player last year as a sophomore. He was a big-time player back there. One of the reasons why the Illinois defense is so good also can catch the football has six career interceptions in two years of playing the crowd today is 70,398 look how far back duck it is now he's one two three four five seven eight yards deep fake Enos gets away and throws it away and he saved it he threw the ball in the general direction of Dwayne Young, but he got away from Quentin Parker, the strong safety, and Parker had him stone dead for a huge loss. The strong safety blitz. Parker was coming from the outside, and he just couldn't get away. Look from the right side of your screen. Number 20 is going to come from outside, and he's a strong safety. Nobody was blocking him. And Eno just tries to ground the ball legally and come back for the next play. Second and ten from the 26. Let it go for Bradley. Got it. Great catch in front of Henry Jones. Oh, you don't know how good that is. In the first place, it was a rainbow thrown by the quarterback. In the second place, he caught it in front of one of the better quarterbacks in the country. You're right there. 18 is Jones. Intercepted one earlier. Bradley is the quality receiver for the uh, Spartans. Goes up and just going to take the ball away. At seeing good vision on the football, 43 yards and a big play for Michigan State that needed a big play offensively. First down at the Illinois 31. So all of a sudden, Martin just picked up again. Reverse coming. Brian Howard. Got a first down. He got inside the 20. Brian Howard is a 5 10 sophomore from Chicago with good foot speed. He gets a little bit more of a hold block or a hook block over there on that corner guy. He's gone. Defense of Illinois has been very tough the last couple of ball games. In fact, uh, not only the last week, but the week before, and including this one. 
First down at the Illini 18, up the middle, Hickson. And Hickson is not bashful about putting a hat on uh, those linebackers. He just, as uh, John McEvick said yesterday, he, that's Big Ten running. Gained five yards that time. McEvick is an ex-quarterback. Says that when I came to the Big Ten, I had to learn that defense was the most important thing. I want a strong defense, which he does. Hickson. And he's down to the five with Derek Brownlow and Bill Hinkle, the two inside backers, wrestling him down. Brownlow, he had an ankle problem coming in, but uh, he is number two in tackles in the Big Ten. His nickname is the Lowdown. He's only 5'10". He came in and immediately made a big play. No question about that. Third and two. Enos in trouble. And penalty flag. Look out for this. Gil Marchman threw it, the referee, and I think somebody grabbed him by the face mask. Yep. That's inadvertent. It's five yards. That's all they need for the first down. Well, the, the, the key thing is that it's not a loss. Right. 20 is Parker. Safety blitz again. A slow developing play for Michigan State trying to get outside. That's just good coaching defensively. And there you see Mel the face mask. Mel Agee. That's just good coaching by Lou Tepper uh, for uh, Illinois. Knowing what uh, Michigan State likes to do in that situation, counteracting it. Of course, it's just tough. You know, the. Uh, well, that's just tough luck. Yeah. He's just reaching. That's right. All. Wasn't intentional, but the guy moves his moves his head, moves his body a little bit, and you got a face mask, a, full, a handful of face masks. So it's a huge break here for Michigan State. I'm not sure of what they were doing. Law of averages yeah, yeah, uh, that's, sending them that's one. Yeah. Very good, uh, very good point. It's first and goal at the five. Keep your eye on 95 and dark blue. They handle him, and Hickson goes right up the middle, just short of the touchdown. Well, they handle Mo Gardner that time. Pearson and uh, Keller. Well, that was one of the key matchups. There's to the left side of your screen, 95. Pearson handles him by himself this time. It was the battle in the trenches we highlighted early on. Great shot there. That is the, the reason why. Hickson is on the goal line. Second down and goal. Hickson dies. They don't give it to him. The offensive front got literally no surge. They're not able to move it at all. A look at the battle of the uh, line of scrimmage. That's Parker, number 20, getting some penetration. And that, first of all, is one of the reasons. And then Hinkle, 51, and Jones, 18, are there. And Michigan State's going to talk about it. They call time with 5-10 to go in the third quarter. They've been down here before and messed it up and didn't get in. If they don't get in this time, oh, got to get a long day. There's the coordinator, the guy that has really uh, put together a very good plan against Michigan State. Not only today, but also, as you saw that graphic, 26 possessions. The Illini have not given up a touchdown. Duck it to tailback. Did not make it. Quentin Parker gets him out of there. You've got to go for it, Keith. 
Here's Parker here. Now this man that went in motion should have stayed here and blocked Parker. Watch Parker as he comes around and gets a piece of the back before he can jump. Gotta go, you're right. Duckett is still in. Eno's kept it, touchdown! That's just, that's just good football. Good, tough defense. Morris Watts, the offensive coordinator for the uh, Spartans, upstairs, saw that on the last play, had no hesitation, called the quarterback keep, and Michigan State gets in for a big score. Huge score. That might have meant season, that might have been bowl game, that might have meant so much, we can't even begin to think about it right now. Kick is true by Langlow. 10-9, Michigan State. Because when you have this kind of, you're struggling, no question about it. And you have these two opportunities, and you... Bernusco's bullet, good. He put some hum on it. And nails the receiver, Sean Wax, at the 36-yard line for a first down. Well, the play action held Bulla. Watch the play action and watch how it holds Bulla. The receiver's going to come in here from behind. Bulla, the middle linebacker, is held. Now he knows exactly where he wants to go with the ball and just doesn't get there in time. Good execution by Illinois. They took Sean Wax out of the ball game because he was waving his arms and yelling and shouting and so forth. Halloween's coming. Yeah. Blood running down the nose of uh, uh, Chuck Bullock. He'd like to be a quarterback looking at that all the time. <laughs> He'd be like you were with Dick <laughs> No. Lined up in the wrong place. That's what it looks like when you look at those guys. It ain't all easy being a quarterback. You gotta look at guys like that. Dixon Edwards took down uh, Howard Griffith on that play. Well, he doesn't wipe himself off when he goes on the sideline. He just leaves that stuff on there. He doesn't have to look at it. I got a kick out of it last night. He's so bright and shiny, not a hair on his head. He shaved it clean. <laughs> I said, how often do you shave? He says, oh, about once a day. <laughs> Second down at eight. Verduzco <laughs> delivers. It is caught by Wagner Lester out of the backfield. And you got a penalty flag on Michigan State upfield. Freddie Wilson just clobbered Sean Wax. Wax was in a shouting match. And they took him out to get his temper off the field. And he goes back in a ball game. Now Wilson comes over and decks him right in front of an official. That's the second time a Michigan State player has gone over and knocked an uh, Illinois man down. Well, Wax threw a block at, uh, at one of the defensive backs long after the receiver went out of bounds, too. So Wax uh, kind of instigated yeah, it. And then did. the second guy gets caught. Sean was trying to get even with the, what happened previously. I have no idea what it was. Probably just conversation. But Wilson, uh, right in front of the man in the striped shirt. Yeah, and that is a big, uh, a big play for this drive. Ball. Whoa. Personal foul, defense. First down. You know, this is a game designed to test your emotions. And you can't go out there and do that. Well, you have to be tough and physical to a point. But then when the whistle blows, you can't, you can't hit. You can hit as long as the whistle doesn't blow. That's right. First down, Illinois now on the Michigan State 38. And they're mounting a mark as Howard Griffith slants. And picks up pretty good yardage before they run him out of bounds. Chuck Fuller talking last night with us about the Michigan State defensive philosophy, put it this way. Of course, uh, Coach Pearls, all his uh, main thing is forget the X's those and to see who's tougher, the man in front of you or, or you. Just He's really into that smash mouth football. And you like it? I like it, like a lot. 
This is Camino Bell in one of his infrequent carries. He's normally a pass receiver blocker, but he gets the ball and he gets the first down on the carry, down to the 25 of Michigan State. Bell is a 220-pound junior from Chicago. Let's pause five seconds here for our stations to tell you who they are. They're a line eye around here. 10-9, Michigan State leading. Illinois trying to respond. First down. Produce go back to throw. Threw it away. No, he got blocked. Blocked. Yeah. Slapped down. Yeah. And that's the first time in two games that we've done of uh, Verduzco that we've seen a pass actually been Well, he was blocked, surrounded blocked down, by yeah. a bunch of trees that time. Well, that's what you want. When you're playing a quarterback only 5'9", watch the left side of your screen. 62 is Confer. Keep him in the, the valley there like it is, he's in a canyon. When you're that size, well, when you're 6'2", you still have to throw between those guys because they're 6'5", and 6'6". There goes Fagan for a yard. Chuck Bullock ran him out of bounds from that middle linebacker position. Now, when that middle linebacker is coming across and knocking the tailback out of bounds, you know for sure that they are not running the stunt 4-3. You know, they can run. The middle linebacker's got to be able to run from side to side. 24-yard line. Third down for the Illini. Lester and Bell out of the shotgun become wide receivers. Medusco dropped it, bounced right back up to it. He's taken down by Confer, and he gets up very tenderly. Take a look again. The three-man line is the three-man rush. Everybody else is going to pair up with somebody. Let's go ahead and start it. You'll see that there's nobody open for him to go to. All right, stop it right here. Everybody is covered. That's the changeup that Michigan State likes to use. Because normally they're zones and they play everybody deep. That stops that short and finesse passing game of Illinois. On fourth and nine, Verduzco almost drops the ball, throws, it is incomplete defended by number 20 Todd Murray against Stephen Muller and Muller was you know from one side of the field looked like he they had run over him but uh, I think it was a pretty good defensive play pretty Murray close. is the nickel back when they take a defensive line out lineman out there's only three rushing he is the man they put in and he's the nickel back that looks like a pretty good play to me yeah he was there but I don't think he was uh, on, on his back until the ball arrived from the 24 then, uh, Michigan State holds and will take over the ball. So that's a pretty good defensive series for the Spurs. Yes, it is. 2.20. Duck it. Taken down after about a seven yard pickup. The Honda Scholar Athlete of the Week brought to you by American Honda, proud to support amateur athletics. This week's award goes to Brent Woodall, junior tight end, University of California, Berkeley. Honda presenting a check for $2,000 to the General Scholarship Fund of Cal Berkeley. His major business administration, grade point 320, as you see there, and he's from La Jolla. He was a big man in Cal's 31-24 win over Arizona State last week. Bruce Knight has got those golden bears uh, blowing some people this season. Penalty flag from the linesman on that play as Hickson gets the yardage for a first down, but let's see about the penalty. It's against the Spartans. Seems like a long third quarter. Virginia got cranked up finally. Notre Dame is now eased ahead of Miami. Their fist fight. Nebraska. Nobody's talking about Nebraska for number one. Ain't yeah. nobody beat the Huskers, have they? That's right. It's, uh, 
Well, Houston either. That matter. Who cares if you're number one in the middle of the season? You just got to ease them way up there at the end. And the whole thing's nothing but something to talk about at the water That's fountain anyhow. That's for sure. Two minutes and 14 seconds to play in the third period. Ball comes back now to the 26th, where it is second down and eight. tough in the third quarter because of that man right there. He gets them fired up at halftime and they come out in the third quarter. Illinois is going to get caught if they'll snap the ball and catch him with 12 men on the field, but they don't do it. He got off. Give it to Duckett. And uh, they take him down after a short pickup. If he snapped the ball on a quick count, he had Illinois go dead with 12 guys on the field. You know, it was a heck of a day for the state of Iowa football. Iowa State, Jimmy Walden bunch, beat Oklahoma 33-31. Iowa beats Michigan in Ann Arbor 24-23. That whole state might jump up and down. Aiden Fry puts out some good ball clubs, though. He wasn't uh, so tough last year. We knew he was going to come back and get something this year. Yep. We don't normally get him two years in a row. Dan Enos throws underneath. It is tipped. Tipped intended for Young. I think it's Mo Gardner that tipped that ball when uh, Enos threw it. So again, the little thing would make a great player. Number 95 was right in his face and tipped the ball. Well, number 95 right there. Normally a nose tackle moves out this time. Containing Enos. Very important. Now watch what he does here. A nose tackle deflecting the pass. He came into the ball game. Number two in the Big Ten in passes broken up with six as a nose tackle or a defensive lineman. Defensive coach, look at it. They got ten of them up there. Now they break off. They got some pressure on him. And he really didn't get all of it either. So Butlin, uh, capable of hitting it farther than that with the win, didn't get a whole lot on it. But let's go back to that Gardner picture there. A defensive coach can take that picture and talk about it for nine hours, showing yeah. his kids how to play the game yeah. because it was footwork. Uh, he avoided the block, yep. contained the quarterback, yep. and then got up and, and defected the pass. All right, here come the Illini one more time from their own 35 with 52 seconds to go in the third quarter. 52 seconds of the third quarter, then they'll turn around and they'll have the wind at their back for the entire fourth quarter. Big difference. Yep. It's a 10 to 9 ball game. And Doug Higgins kicked the 55 yarder with the wind in the first quarter. Howard Griffin. Three yards. Yep, they still have a homecoming king and queen at the University of Illinois. Natalie Cusson, senior, Cliffside, New Jersey. The king is Adam Fleischer, senior from Skokie, Illinois. I don't know if he was really tall or she was just really short. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe he was standing on an apple box. <laughs> well, they're probably not going to the dance together. <laughs> Wagner Lester's in there on second down and eight. Brought down by Cliff Confer. So the third quarter is over. We'll be back after this message of the word from our ABC station. Illinois boasts the most seats between the end zones in their Memorial Stadium. And high atop the 50-yard line, I'm with a lady that 53 years ago was the homecoming queen. This is C. Dean Prairie. Fritzy, what was your most memorable moment of that weekend when you were elected homecoming queen here? Well, it was exciting from beginning to end, everything about it. It's so much fun to remember fun things, and that was a fun, fun weekend. Now, you're one whale of a Illini football fan. For 33 years, you've had these seats. Exactly. Tell you what, Keith, they're the best seats in the house. <laughs> Big piece in the paper about her this morning. Third down for the Illini and three. There's your first down. Howard Griffith took a pretty good lick 
The ball was hanging out there like a loaf of bread, but he got it tucked away just in time. And Howard's been playing with a, a sore neck that he hurt in the Ohio State game that we saw. And it flares up on him and subsides. It's a passing situation, and uh, Illinois, a passing team, goes with a little bit of a delayed draw action. It's a good hit right here. Murray, number 20. Carrying the ball is Camino Bell. I mean, it's almost an upset when Bell gets his hands on the ball. Yeah. Camino Bell. But each time that he has been asked to carry it, he's done well. That's one thing about the University of Illinois, especially their offense. A lot of players play. A lot of players uh, catch the catch passes. In fact, uh, in Jordan Makovic's time, at least six different receivers have caught a ball in every game he's coached, and that's been 29 straight games. Griffith is now the lone back, and Chuck Buller backs up a little bit, and eyeballs him. Reduce drops back to throw, gets it away down the middle to Griffith. And Griffith is dragged down by Dixon Edwards. Edwards got to him before Chuck could get there. Take a look at the third quarter statistically. The plays are exactly the same. Uh, almost exactly the same. First down, uh, almost the same. And the total yardage is about the same. Uh, two turnovers for Michigan State. And the score is about the same. Oh, very, go. very well played game defensively. If you like shutouts and defensive battles, the pitchers do. Ball just inside the 40. First down as Verduzco sets up, lets it go down the middle, incomplete. He was very close to completing it to Steve Mueller. if that knee may not turn out to be a bit of a problem for him in the coming week though well, it's going to be stiff there's no yep. question about it they i really think it's hyperextended week. it just got bent back a little bit yep. and uh, obviously there was no side to side damage or he wouldn't be playing wax is out of there right now it's second down and ten and just to howard griffith couple of yards that's all so they're looking at third now and long Notre Dame adding a field goal Alabama's given Tennessee what for in Knoxville huh. well that's a shocker there Tennessee just ran all over Florida last week well see that's old folks rivalry there. I mean, that goes back generations. <laughs> There's a real feeling in that. <laughs> Muskets and all. Third down. All through it. Too hard and too high. He got to dancing around. He didn't set himself. You can, he had dancing feet. And uh, he had his man open, Bell, and good for the first down. But he just flat missed he had, he, he had what he wanted right yep. here. It's man-to-man -man coverage. All these people are going to clear out, and he's going to have this whole area to run a little option, and he just misses the receiver. <laughs> Guys to the right side are just going to clear out. The back just comes out, runs an option, breaks to the outside. It was wide open. No good. Jimmy Harness is in the punt with the wind. <laughs> He knocks it into the end zone. Now, if they'd have tried for the T and three, it would have only been 55. They've done that already. All scores and games are complete. Uh, well, they went away pretty quick, didn't it? Uh, except for this one. The comment was made by Dave Brinson. How long has it been since Michigan and Northwestern were tied down in the... Uh, second half of the Big Ten Dunford. This is Tico Duckett for a first down from the 20 out near the 31. 10-9 Michigan State leads Illinois. Duckett now is over 100 yards. 20 carries. Tico has 107 yards. So look at that. Tuck it away. Indiana, Michigan scheduled for next week on ABC Sports. As you can see Iowa sitting up on top. So is Minnesota. They play on November 24. 
Iowa comes to Illinois November 3rd. Duckett goes again, this time bouncing outside and is taken down at the line of scrimmage. Quentin Parker and Henry Jones handled it. It's just good defensive play by Jones. He's done that several times. He had an interception in the ball game. Illinois is right up there in several defensive categories in the Big Ten. Hickson. Seven yards. Marlon Primus takes him down. Hickson's hot. Well, you know, it always looks like it's the defensive guy when you, something like that happens, Keith. But Hickson, the running back, if he just keeps going, the defensive guy says, I'm not going to let you go. The whistle's blown, and you're still trying to run. The whistle blows, you stop trying to run, and I'll stop trying to tackle you. Powell over there. Big Chief time. Down back of it. Fourth quarter. Home. They're trailing. Big play there by the Illini. That's number 20. That's Quentin Parker. And he took Hickson down for a big loss. He's been doing it, doing it all day. Right here, the strong safety. They're going to try the option. He's right in the backfield and makes a great play. This is like an interception because you force Michigan State to punt the ball away. You get the football. Into the wind. And Henry Jones is back to handle the punt. Figures to be a tricky punt. There are 10 Illini up on the line of scrimmage. They feel back. Butland gets it out of there pretty well. It takes an Illinois bounce. And is down at midfield. A 21-yard punt. And Illinois sitting right in the middle of the field. Not much there for Howard Griffith. Give him three. So look at some of the quarterbacks that were here in the 80s preceding Jason Verdusco. Wilson, Eason, Trudeau, and George all were drafted into the NFL. Three of the four in the first round. Second down and seven. 47 of Michigan State. Camino Bell, the single back. Play looks pass all the way. It is. It is caught. Caught right on the 40-yard line by Jeff Finky. I tell you what, he's a pretty good looking tight end. Not so big, he's 6'3, 225. That may be why he gets open so much. Well, he is their receiving tight end. He is listed as the number two tight end, but if they want to throw, he's the guy that they bring in. Partly the starter is uh, was injured earlier in the ballgame, hurt a knee. I think he came into the ballgame with nine receptions. And a touchdown. Not quite. You know, Sean Wax is being alternated today quite a bit. John Wright just went in to replace him at the split end position. Washington Huskies jumping all over Stanford today. 52 to 8 in the fourth quarter. California's beating up UCLA in the fourth quarter. Most everybody seems to feel that Washington's going to the road bowl unless something really serious happens to them. It's Lester and Bell now on third down and six inches. Uh-oh. Quarterback stepped out. How are they going to call this? Verdusco stepped out and didn't yeah. get the ball. Well, Verdusco forgot the snap count. Yep. He stepped out again. Same thing that happened to Enos earlier. Don't see that. Watch uh, Verdusco step out now. Nobody else moves. That's the key. If, if one of those other offensive linemen, they all know what the snap count is. That happens a lot. People don't realize how often the quarterback will forget the snap count. 
got all those numbers running through his head, and he's thinking about checking off, and he's worrying about getting his... He's looking at uh, Bola with that face. <laughs> I mean, all that blood running down. He's, How can I remember the snap count is? <laughs> <laughs> well, that makes it a bit of a different thing, doesn't it? That's a big, big penalty there. Third down and five instead of third down and six inches. So they hurt themselves. He's got a man. Pass is complete for Turner. Turner drops the ball, but it should belong to the Illini. He's the last man that possessed it before it went out of bounds. It's a three-man rush, man-to-man -man coverage, something that's been successful for Michigan State early on. This time, Turner gets away from Brenningstuhl, number 83. It's a big uh, third down conversion for Illinois. It's First good. down at the 28-yard line. Griffith is back in for the fighting Illini. Produsco's pass is good to the tight end, Finky. And he's out of bounds down at the 13-yard line. The secondary, defensive secondary, people got interested in the wideout. They went the other way, and that left the big guy all by himself. And that third down conversion to Turner was a big play in this drive, obviously. Maybe of the game, Bob. Maybe yep. of the game. Yep. They run it inside, try to trap and send Griffith. He gets it to the 10. I think he fumbled the ball, Keith. Looked like it might have. It was uh, spawn and scratching and scrambling for it. But it belongs to Illinois. Quick count. Illinois does this occasionally. And the ball is yeah. out there. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of Illinois players saw it. A lot of beef covered it, too. Simpson, I think. Here they come. Mueller never looked back. And the ball was thrown out of bounds. Well, he and didn't have long was having a terrible time getting up. Yeah, he didn't have a lot of time to throw because they blitzed. He's saying, no, no, I'm all right. Don't send anybody in. I don't want to miss this next play. If a trainer comes out, he's got to miss a play. Here's a blitz. Bull of 41, a linebacker. One of the defensive linemen that get him, but there were seven guys after him. Well, if you blitz on second down, do you blitz on third? Looks like it. Yep. Incomplete pass. He threw it hard. He's knocked down, and I think Verduzco's got to come out of the ball game. He is really he's just hardly. Oh, won. he has hit good and hard too. Two linebackers on that side. They both come. That's why Finky looks real quick. He says they both came on the hot receiver. You don't see a Verdusco getting hit, but he was decked. And so here is Mr. Higgins from 27 yards. Snap good, hold good, kick. Good. <laughs> Illinois goes to the lead by two. week in the Michigan game how many times Michigan State under George Perlis has started slowly first half of the season you see there only 87 when they went to the Rose Bowl and won there did they jump out to a, a winning record in the first half of the season well they've done the same thing this year well, it's mainly because the tougher games they play Notre Dame they've played Miami they've played Michigan last five games on the schedule but the one loss that may haunt him might very well be the one he lost at home, 12-7 to the Iowa Hawkeyes. If he wins this ballgame, 
he may be in the catbird seat as far as the Big Ten yep. championship. He's got to win this game. He trails now 12 to 10. And Brian Winters has the ball for the Spartans. And goes down around the 23-yard line. So with seven minutes and 19 seconds to play in the game now, it's up to the Spartans. It's been a struggle of field goals. I think if you would have taken to George Perlis this situation before the season, hey, uh, we, you, you play Michigan and Illinois on the road. How about if we uh, let you win the first one and uh, we give you seven minutes to go and you give you give you the ball and all you need is a field goal to win? Would you take it? You break your arm, shaking your hand. <laughs> Call it the 22-yard line. First down. This is Tico Duckett. Oh, he got away from Parker. And he is finally ridden down by Bill Hinkle, an inside linebacker. But he put a move on uh, Parker and just ran away from him. Here's Jack. But Keith, you've been talking about the whale of a beating that Jason verdersko has been getting. Well, you see this. The chairs here, that's where the team goes and settles in to get offensive instructions from John Makovic. Every time they come there, Jason refuses to sit down. He stands over in the corner. Everybody asks him how his knee is. He says, it's fine. It ain't. Hyland Hickson is the tailback now with the ball and nothing. Derek Brownlow, one more time, the senior from Indianapolis. Brownlow went to the same high school as Mo Gardner. They were high school teammates. You think that team wasn't pretty good? You look at Gardner, number 95, his high school teammate, getting double teamed as usual. The beneficiary is uh, is Brownlow, number 48 at the top of your screen, who just went right through there and made the tackle. Second down and ten. Eno throws underneath behind everybody and Hickson makes a great run and gets the first down. He puts the ball inside the Illinois 45 yard line with six minutes and seven seconds to play in the game. And Illinois leading 12 to 10. The entire offense are those two backs, Hickson and Duckett, either running the football or throwing it to him out of the backfield. Enos is the guy that's in charge, has to make the plays, make the right call at the line of scrimmage. Uh, Morris Watts, the coordinator, says he does a lot of checking off at the line of scrimmage. Puts us in the right running play and the right passing play, but those two tailbacks are the, are the, are the offense. Duckett is back in. First down. Pass thrown to the sidelines, complete to Bradley. Boy, Bradley had one great catch in this game. I mean, really great catch. Of course, Michigan State playing without it's ace Courtney Hawkins because of the separated shoulder. Put it up to 37. Make it second down and four. I tell you, you give them, uh, you give them back uh, Courtney Hawkins. Their offensive uh, percentage goes up considerably. That's Hickson working his way down, about third and one remaining. You got five minutes to go in the ball game. You've got the type of offense that can go into this win. If you were a pass-only offense, you'd be in trouble, but they've got a running style offense and an injury on the field. That's Hickson. Flexing his right leg. And that's trouble there. Now he's going to trot off. Looks like he um, maybe has stretched a, his ankle a little bit. But that will hurt him. Third and a long one. About a yard and a half. Goes Duckett. He's got it. A.G. locked his legs and Brownlow took him from the top. 
And Kinney is warming up on the sidelines for Illinois. Jeff Kinney, the backup quarterback. And you got a man down. That's an Illinois man shaken up. Parker. Parker, number 20. There's Kenny cranking up. If Hickson on the other side is walking around, got his hat back on. Timeout for the injured Quentin Parker, 455. Play it again. Prelude SI with amazing four wheel steering. From Number 20 makes a hit on Duckett, but then from the right of your screen is hit by one of his own players. Brownlow, Brownlow yeah. goes underneath it. Yeah, just bends, that, bends the knee back. So that puts Derek Rucker into the ball game, a freshman replacing a fifth year senior. One of the premier safeties in the Big Ten is gone for the moment. First down for Michigan State. This is Chico Duckett. And they'll have a couple of yards before Mo Gardner takes care of him. Highland Hickson, incidentally, has got his hat on and walking around on the sidelines looking to come back in the ballgame. So he looks like he's all right. Second down and eight. 12-10, and I should tell you, it feels like, from where we're sitting, that the wind has subsided quite a bit. It is blowing less hard than it has most of the day. Duckett and Hickson are both in the backfield as Enos drops the throw. Dumps it off to Hickson. Oh, what a hit. Oh, you know who he ran into, butted heads with? Mo Gardner. I mean, that are, that's two tough guys. Button heads right there. There's a penalty flag on the field. It's holding, and it's against Illinois. That's a big call there. Oui. Illinois with a good defensive play. It's going to be a first down, automatic first down, defensive holding. Is it ever a big call? It'll go from the 32 to the 22. You are now in John Langlow's reign. Well, this is this is the same place that Perlis was last week against Michigan. You know, you're down there now. You're in field goal range. You got the all-time leading kicker Michigan in Michigan State, State history on the sideline time. warming up. Now what you want to do is maybe get a little closer, but take some time off the clock. There's three minutes and 50 seconds to play. And they've got a first down at the Illinois call at the 20. Duckett the tailback. Penalty flag. And Michigan State may have helped Illinois a little there. So the call goes against Michigan State back to the 25, a five yard penalty. If we have time, Roger Twybell will run down all the scores for you, but I don't know, you ain't gonna have much time. Roger, you better talk fast. <laughs> of course, if you're John Makovic, you've got your defensive team out there, which a lot of the coaches in the Big Ten say that the Illinois group is the best defensive group in the Big Ten. They returned nine starters from last year. There are nine seniors on the ball club. Seven of them are fifth-year seniors. A lot of experience on this ball club defensively for Illinois. First and 15, Enos gives the ball to Duckett. Not much. Not much. A couple of yards. He started to go out. 
There was no hole there, no opening at all. So he had to come back in. Gets a couple. Quentin Parker, uh, ankle, not knee. So that's got to be good news. Right ankle, you got a better chance to heal that. That's ice. They just put a lot of ice on there to keep the swelling down. Keep his shoe on. That helps keep the swelling down also. Second down, still about 14, 15. Bucket down to the 20. It'll be third down and 10. Marlon Primus making the tackle. Primus is a, is a free safety in the middle of the field. He has made a lot of tackles from that free safety position today. That's one of the reasons why this Illinois defense is so good. All the people on that defense tackle the uh, runner. I keep talking about Rob Roy being a, a possession type pass receiver, the fullback. He hasn't done much in the last two weeks. He just came back into the ball game. And Dan Enos had just called a timeout at 224 to play in the game. 12-10, Illinois. 224 to play. Third down and 10, Michigan State. The ball at the Illinois 20. All the scores are in. Iowa and Minnesota. 3-0 in the Big Ten. Michigan State loses, they got a problem. Michigan State wins, they got a very good chance to go to the road. In the driver's seat. And how many times have we heard the coaches around this league say that in this league, defense is what wins? And here we see a great example of it here today. Two good defensive teams getting down to the end of the ball game. play Iowa here November 3rd but right now this may be the big moment of this game right here Tico Duckett is hit and taken down by number 39 that is Derek Rucker that is the freshman strong safety that came in replacing Quentin Parker so he makes a big play good point but they ran the ball to the middle of the field, the field. to get Langlow the field goal kicker straight on he hit one from 21 yards into the wind, good. He missed from 37 yards wide left. It is from 34 yards. The wind is down. Not as strong as it's been. Butlin got it down. Langlow hits it and makes it. into the books as a 35-yard field goal. And it's 13 to 12, Michigan State. It's just been an absolute bone-twisting, gut-busting struggle of the ball game. It, it, it hasn't been pretty. It's been a, a pitcher's duel, a defensive battle, and, and the coaches say, I want defense. I want to be able to run the ball, and I want good kickers, and that's what George Perlis of Michigan State has. Makovic also has a good defense, and he's got a good kicker who's already kicked four field goals. They have a minute and 41 seconds to play, and the wind at their back. The wind is not as much of a factor now as it has been most of the day, but it is still going to be at the back of the Illinois kicker if they can get him anywhere in the neighborhood. on a homecoming weekend in Champaign-Urbana, the University of Illinois. <laughs> now all as many as you could possibly stuff into the Coliseum are going to go over and have a big party later tonight with Bob Hope.
Fagan and Lynch. 28, Lynch, 44, Fagan. They need to get some run here and get that ball back up field. 141, quick kick. Bobbled, rolling around, 13-yard line. Fagan finally picks it up. Fumble the football! And I think one of the Illini got to it first. But Fagan took a lick. He's still down. Ball came loose. And it's Illinois ball. And number 91, I thought, was the man that dove after it. But I can't say for sure. Who was it? 60? Julian Brown. All right. And Verdusco answers the call at quarterback. He's back on the field. But Fagan is still down. He really got a ball up here. Well, the script kick worked beautifully. The timing was all messed up. The ball comes loose. There's Brown, number 60, the first guy there, kept possession of it. Illinois, incidentally, will have all three of their timeouts to work with. Now. And that is an area that is not very strong for Illinois. Their kickoff returns have been last in the Big Ten all year. There's the remaining schedule for Michigan State. That's why we said what we said. There's really uh, Minnesota, Indiana represent the principal challenges in that. They have Indiana and Purdue at home. They go to Minnesota. They have Northwestern and Wisconsin. Well, Minnesota may have something to say about this whole uh, whole thing. You know that? Because uh, Iowa plays Minnesota in the last game of the season. So the Hawkeyes have to go go there too. So the Gophers may have something to say about who wins what. Run that little delay. That's Howard Griffith. And he's out of bounds at the 29-yard line. The key thing here is, Keith, is you're only down by one point, 13 to 12. You've got a minute and a half to play. You've got all your timeouts. All you need is a field goal. You don't need to go all the way to the score, uh, to the end zone to score. So there is really plenty of time. And Illinois has that possession passing attack. They know how to move it around. Verdusco has the ball bounced favorably for him, and the catch is made by Wagner Lester. That's a heck of a catch by Lester. Good for a first down, so they're minimizing the clock and how lucky they are to still have the ball. Watch this thing go flying over his head. Now that's a that's a gimpy quarterback that has to chase it. Yes, that, that ball was just was just a bad snap. Tomano Bell, they're up across the 40 to the 41. Minute 13 to play in the ball game. First of all, you don't want to take any sacks because that really loses yardage for you and it also kills time, takes time for your receivers. Only positive plays. Secondly, no interceptions, obviously. And the third thing is, if nobody's open, throw it away. You know, the, the thing that, that Makovic is, is lacking here is the mobility of his quarterback that he would like to have. He'd like to get him outside the pocket. With that injury to his knee, he can't do that. Irish by nine at South Bend over Miami in the final quarter. There have been some surprises today, haven't there? All around the country. Ball is just short of the 42, second down. About three, Verdusco's pass, drilled, it's done! It's Mueller. He's down at the Michigan State 32-yard line. Block is running as soon as they put the chains down. Yelena ready to go.
throws it away. Didn't have anybody except possibly Turner. Turner was downfield. He's squawking because uh, he thought he was being held by one of the linebackers. Smart play by Verduzco, though. Yep. This, Michigan State is playing tight man-to-man -man coverage in the secondary, something that they don't do a lot of, but they're playing it now because they want to take away the easy the uh, possession passes of Illinois. They've put it down this time at the 33-yard line. Inside, not much. Wagner Lester, Chuck Bull of the tackle. There's the man beginning to get a little heavy, <laughs> Doug Higgins. <laughs> Made four out of five field goals today. If they don't take it any further, it'd be a 48-yard field goal. Seconds, 13 to 12, Michigan State. He's telling him to play, and then he's also probably suggesting who to throw it to. He's telling him also what the coverage has been on the last couple of situations, which has been man to man all over the field. Situations like this, you like to throw it to your back out of the backfield or your tight end somewhere in the center of the field. Give him an option route to go one way or the other. Let him choose. Third down and nine. Pass is caught by Bell. No. And slides out of his arms as he goes down. No. Incomplete down at the 22. Big difference between the 22 and the 33. A, a big decision here. Do you kick it? And they are going to kick it. Well, it's fourth down. Yep, yep. Ball was definitely out, so it's going to be a 48-yard field goal. Big difference. If Bell holds that. Oh, yeah. He holds it. Ooh, but you can, you can run some more plays. 48-yard try. White's got to hold it. Icorn's got to snap it. Enough leg. It's good! the larger hopes of Michigan State. Michigan State will have two losses if this game uh, ends the way it is right now. A walk-on four years ago just kicked the biggest field goal of his life. Doug Higgins is from Normal, Illinois. That figures. <laughs> Michigan State in timeouts now. One, one timeout, 42 seconds. And they're a bit unlucky there. The ball went right over the pylon and will come out for the 20. First down. But at the same time, use nothing off the clock. 42 seconds and one timeout.
20. Enos is sacked at the 10 by Mel Agee. They've got to spend the time out. Today's game produced by Jim Ressler, directed by Larry Kim, technical director Gary Larkin, associate director Dave Kiviat. Todd Berry, our spotter, Dave Bernson, our statistician. Winners and the losers. The two kickers, so very prominent in today's ball game. Ball is back on the 11-yard line after the sack of Enos. Danny had no real chance to look downfield. Time remaining, 33 seconds. Michigan State with no more. Time's up. Michigan State just hopes to get the ball in the hands of one of their big play people, and that is Bradley, the wide receiver, or one of their backs. Duckett or Hickson, with the speed that can break some tackles and get it downfield. I think you're going to have to probably get, have a continuing play here, you know? Mm -hmm. it, it may wind up where something like that. Laterals and yep. stuff. Yeah. Yep. They're going to put three seconds back on the clock. No first down either. Three more plays. Three plays. <laughs> hey. Boy, I no tell you, we have seen some struggle this, these last two weeks. Last this two something, weeks. Haven't <laughs> Michigan State guys have got to go home and just collapse after these two weeks, these last two games. Wow. It's second down and 19. Enos is pass thrown underneath to Brian Howard. Howard has the ball come loose. It's going to stay in possession of Michigan State at the 20. They can't stop the clock. Nope. Block is running. 15. Oh, get out of bounds. He did not. He did not get out of bounds. He turned inside to the field of play, and the game is over. <laughs> Illinois beats Michigan State 15 to 13. The Chevrolet most valuable players of the game, the kickers, John Langlow, number 10, Michigan State, Doug Higgins, number 4, Illinois. Chevrolet donating $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund for academic achievements and helping those who need fina have financial needs. John Langlow and Doug Higgins, and what a game. Illinois, 15. Michigan State, 13. Alabama has just finished upsetting Tennessee, 9 to 3. 9 to 6, I'm sorry. 9 to 6. So it's been a day of upsets in college football. But not here. Illinois was favored, and they barely squeaked through on a 48-yard field goal by Doug Higgins. Keith Jackson, Bob Greasy, Jack Aroot, we hope you enjoyed it.